Welcome to the wonderful world of physics. This is Physics 102B, the chapter 19 homework. We'll start with number 19. A 50 turn circular coil has diameter 6.2 centimeters and resistance 0.75 ohms. A magnetic field perpendicular to the coil is changing at 0 0.50 teslas per second. The induced current in the coil is what? All right, let's look at the given information. We have n equals 50 coils. What's more important than the diameter is the radius. So let's go ahead and put that 3.1 centimeters. We have the resistance. We have the rate of change of the magnetic field. And we've got the coil perpendicular to the magnetic field. The electromotive force, which we'll need to find the current, is n times the rate of change of flux. Now let's expand the flux into BA cosine theta. Cosine theta is going to remain the same since the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. It's just going to be 1, so I've just turned that into 1 right there. So we have the electromotive force is n times the area times the rate of change of the magnetic field. So let's plug in the values. 50 times pi times radius squared times rate of change of the magnetic field. And there uh, we have that. Rate of change is 0.5 teslas per second. We plug all those values in and we get 0 0.0755 volts. Then we want to know the current, so we're going to divide by the resistance of 0.75 ohms and we get 100 milliamperes. Number 27 says a 1.5 Tesla magnetic field lies perpendicular to a 25 centimeter diameter circular wire loop. Here I've drawn the picture. And once again, as we draw the picture, we can see that the relevant angle theta is zero degrees. It's the angle between a vector perpendicular to the loop and the magnetic field itself, so zero degrees. Radius is 12.5 centimeters. The question is simply what is the flux through the loop. So flux is b times a times cosine theta. Plug those in, area is pi r squared, and you should get 0 0.0736 Weber's or 74 millivabers. Number 29, at one location, Earth's magnetic field has a magnitude of 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 Teslas with an inclination of 72 degrees to the horizontal. Find the magnetic flux through the a horizontal rectangular roof measuring 35 meters by 20 meters. I think that the author made a mistake in writing this problem. I think what the author meant to say was 72 degrees inclined to the vertical. I think the author meant for the magnetic field to be going at a more shallow angle. And uh, that pans out with when you look at the answer in the back of the book, that's the answer that corresponds to that. However, I'm going to go with exactly as the author wrote it, 70 degrees, 72 degrees inclined to the horizontal right there. Now, if you think about the roof, and I've drawn here in black a vector that is perpendicular to the roof, the relevant angle is this little bit in here, theta equals 18 degrees. So for our figuring out the flux, it's that 18 degree angle that's going to matter. The area of the roof is it's a rectangle, 35 meters by 20 meters, so 700 meters squared. So we calculate the flux is the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of that 18 degree angle, and we get 0 0.036 Weber's. Number 31 has a 150 turn circular coil with diameter 5.25 centimeters, resistance 1.30 ohms. Magnetic field perpendicular to the coil is changing at 1.15 Teslas per second. Find the induced current. Okay, we're once again going to need the radius. It's going to be half of the diameter, 2.625 centimeters. And the rate of change, delta B over delta T, 1.15 Teslas per second. So first we solve for the electromotive force n times change in flux over change of time. That's n times delta BA cosine theta over delta T. 
Uh, as with the previous problems, cosine theta becomes just one, and we're gonna factor area to the outside of that expression. So pi r squared, I left off the n in the beginning, so I tacked it on the end, uh, but pi r squared times n times delta b over delta t, and that is the rate of change of the magnetic field. So when we plug in all the values, we get an electromotive force of 0.3754 volts. Finally, we find the induced current by dividing that by the resistance, and we get 0.287 amperes. Number 35, circular wire coil gives the resistance, it gives the area perpendicular to a magnetic field that is increasing at two Teslas per second. And so this problem is very similar to uh, previous ones we've looked at. Here it's telling us what the current is, and then we have to figure out N, the number of turns in the coil. So we take all the given information, as you can see I've listed out there, and we just need to solve for N. We can start by using current equals E over R, voltage over resistance, which is one over resistance times N delta phi over delta T. And we're gonna isolate algebraically N. So that becomes N over R times delta BA over delta T. Once again, because of the perpendicular coil, cosine theta is just one and Notice how I've put delta P, delta B over delta T together because that's a quantity that is known. So we have current equals NA times delta B over delta T divided by R. Solve that algebraically for N, we get R times I over A delta B over delta T. And then we can plug in all those quantities and we get 35 terms. Number 37 refers back to an example that was done in class and in the textbook. So you can look at the picture and I've drawn it here. We have a magnetic field perpendicular to the, the rail tracks with a bar on it that we can drag one way or the other. And the width of the tracks is L. And for this one, it says that we're moving the bar at 0 0.80 meters per second to the left as I've drawn it there. Find the magnitude and direction of the induced current. Let's think about the direction first. We're gonna use our right hand. And as I've drawn it there, if we are pulling the bar to the left, then the area of the loop is decreasing. So flux is gonna be decreasing going into the board or into the page. If flux is decreasing into the page, I'm gonna point my thumb into the page to uh, try to keep the magnetic field from decreasing. So we imagine that our thumb is actually something that can add to the magnetic field or magnetic flux. And so thumb points into the page and the fingers of the right hand go around clockwise. So the current will be induced in this clockwise direction. Now, the electromotive force there was an equation that uh, was derived in class and uh, in the textbook, but the electromotive force, uh, we're gonna ignore the negative sign here. It becomes the magnetic field times L times the speed. And we get 0.1728 volts as the magnitude. So then the current is that 0.1728 volts divided by the resistance of 2.3 ohms, and we get 0 0.075 amperes. The next question asks, at what rate is electric power generated? And so we can say power is current squared times resistance and get 13 milliwatts. By the way, uh, we also have this derived in class and in the book, uh, that it's B squared times L squared times V squared divided by R. And if you plug in all those values, you'll get 13 milliwatts as well. And finally, number 47 is about a transformer. And you can see at the bottom of the page, a transformer with the two uh, different coils of wire. It says 120 volt EMF is across a transformer's 200 turn primary coil. 
how many turns should the secondary have in order to produce a 30 volt EMF? So this is a step down transformer that is cutting the voltage by uh, a factor of four. And so it's going to cut the number of turns by a factor of four as well. Uh, but let's actually do the equation that E in the secondary, the voltage in the secondary, is the voltage in the primary times N2 over N1. And so we solve for N2 equals N1 over the ratio of those voltages, 200 times 300 over 120. There's that cutting it by a factor of four. So 200 times 1 fourth is 50 turns for this step down transformer. Question B asks, a 240 volt EMF is across a transformer's 140 turn primary coil. What is the EMF in the 250 turn secondary coil? So let's list out the given information, number of turns. So N1 and the primary is 140, the EMF is 240 volts. N2 is 250, we want to know the EMF for the secondary. So we'll just start with this equation, E2 equals E1 times N2 over N1, and we want to solve for E2. So 240 volts times the ratio of 250 over 140. This becomes a step up transformer. More coils in the secondary is going to be a greater voltage according to the ratio of the turns. And so we get 429 volts. That is the end of the chapter 19 homework. Have a great day.